All right, what's happening everybody? I've been getting tons of questions about underwater cameras and if they're worth it and how to use them. So I'm gonna show you guys like kind of the tips and tricks for using an underwater camera. Today I'm gonna to be using the AquaView Micro Revolution 5 Pro. And what the Pro does is basically it has a DVR feature in it. I use the DVR for doing this YouTube stuff. Uh, you don't need a DVR unless you're like really into posting on Facebook and sharing that video footage uh, with everybody else. So. I'm going to be using this for an example. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to kind of keep referring back to is the amount of light that you need to film underwater. So I'm going to start with five feet deep and I'm going to show you guys the, the camera right here. So this is super tiny. There's a little tiny sensor in there. It's a one, I think it's a one third CMOS sensor. You guys don't need to know that. It's really tiny compared to like the big camera that you guys are looking at me right now. Uh, or even the GoPro one is a little bit bigger. So it needs a lot of light to work. So I'm going to tell you guys the tricks that I use and how to make these things stop spinning and everything that I use to do it. So let me show you guys uh, what it looks like at five feet. And as you can see from the GoPro camera, the ice is super clear. We just had a big warm spell, super sunny out. This is like the best conditions besides uh, like five inches of black clear ice. So let all that light through. So I'm going to send it down and show you what it looks like at uh, five feet of water. And that's what it looks like on a bright sunny day. We're gonna close that up. We're gonna go pull the sled out even further. We're gonna try for 20 feet deep, which I think is the next kind of increment people fish in. If I stop at 15, I'll stop at 15. I'll tell you guys where I'm stopping. All right, guys, now we're in eight and a half foot of water. We got the camera set up. We're facing the jig over here. Um, this is what it looks like underneath. And so a couple of the other tricks that I'm gonna teach you guys or talk about is keeping this from spinning is kind of, kind of a pain. So what I've done in the past is one, you buy this thing, it's $13. You can make a stick yourself and wrap it around there and rotate that stick. Anything you can do to like keep that from rotating. The other thing you can do is, um, I'm just gonna pull the camera up and show you guys. Is if your camera has one of these on it or you can basically hang something off the bottom of it, bottom of it if you want to or make something, set that right in the mud or on top of a rock or whatever. Keep that cable tight and then just lift up and set it down, lift up and set it down, lift up and set it down. That's how I did it before I got this little tripod thing and it actually ended up being, ends up working really well because most of the fish that I'm fishing for, perch and stuff like that, are right glued to the bottom. Same with lake trout. So you keep it right on the bottom and you don't have to worry about it spinning. So another th quick thing you guys can do, I don't know if I mentioned it before, is basically if you have a, bring out a snow shovel with you and shovel as much snow off the ice uh, around you as possible. That'll let more light through and so forth. And if it's legal in your state, you can shine a light down the hole. Not every state has, is that, that's legal. So that'll actually help with the, uh, with the light down the bottom. 20 feet exactly. Um, we're gonna pop down the camera again, show you guys what it looks like. Now, a couple of the things that you can see with underwater cameras is they come with two different types of lights. Most of them come with infrared lights. So there's two little tiny infrared LEDs right there and right there. You can't see those with the naked eye. You'll see a little bit of red in there, uh, but mostly this camera can see it. That's what they use for like night vision and stuff like that. Um, that shines a little bit of light. The one disadvantage of doing that sometimes is it actually just glows the dirt down there. So we're gonna show you all the way down and I'm gonna, at 20 feet, there's less light. So the deeper you go, the less light penetrates through the, through the ice and through the water. Doesn't matter what time of year it is. So we're gonna go all the way down. So. The view I'm showing you right now is the AquaView Micro Revolution 5 Pro, which is no different than the normal one, um, without the infrared lights on. So I'm going to spin that around. Show you guys, hope you guys don't get nauseous. Um, so you can see a little bit of rock on the bottom, shells. It's hard to see with the glare out here. Normally I'm in my shanty. And so I'll show you that view. And now I'm going to stop the recording, switch over to infrared view, and show you what that looks like. As you can see, it lights up little tiny pieces of uh, basically dirt and, and silt on the bottom. 
All right, guys, now we're out at 30 feet, 30.5 feet exactly. We're gonna go down, same thing. I'm gonna turn the uh, normal, uh, no lights on, and then I'm gonna turn the lights on right after and show you guys what I'm actually seeing at 30 feet deep. And uh, right now I'm standing on probably that much black ice the whole way out. So that's ideal for basically using an underwater camera. All the light gets a chance to shoot through it. This is with the infrared lights on so sometimes it actually doesn't help you to have the infrared lights on it actually gets in the way so let me go over the tips and tricks we're in 30 foot of water again I was gonna go a little bit closer but uh, I'll show you what I'm fishing with so this is just basically a little tungsten jig so this is what we're gonna be looking for down there and with the aqua view I'm not sure about the any of the other brands you're going to turn it on. It's going to have cardinal directions on it, which is kind of cool. It takes a minute to calibrate it and uh, get that going, but I'll show you on the screen here in a minute once it gets going. So I normally drill my holes a couple feet apart from each other. Um, I like my camera really close to my jig, depending on the water clarity, how deep I'm fishing. I'm also normally in the shanty, so I can only have them so far apart um, so I can adjust the cable but I can actually have the camera like way away if I could see my jig, but most of the time you can't, or unless I'm fishing something really big. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but up in that top corner there, there's a lot of glare, but basically it says Southeast, Northeast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the camera out, not, not even put it down the hole, I'm gonna aim it towards the hole I'm gonna be fishing in. And right now it says East. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop down the camera all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to face that camera east and I'm already probably 90% there for finding my jig. So I said southeast before, let's drop down the jig down there and actually go look for that jig. And that way we can actually film the actual, not film, but look and see what fish are biting. Uh, one of the big advantages of this, I'll put the links to my other videos that I made about this uh, in the description below and in the little clicky things above. But basically, I can pull this away from small fish and only hook the big fish or chase after the big fish. Um, and, you know, watch their reaction to baits. It's actually really very interesting. And so another thing that AquaView produces is this thing right here. So this is, I think... I don't even know what they call it. It's like anywhere between 15 to 25 bucks. It's a little adapter and all it does is it sits over the top of the hole. And you slide your cable right in there. And that way you can just sit there and you can twist it. They also make the Mopod or whatever, which is one that has a, has a remote control on it. That one's about $60. I'll leave all the links in the descriptions for these things. That way you can have the camera like far away from you um, or outside of your shanty or your eye shack and actually hit the button, you can actually spin it around to see what's coming in your area, which is kind of cool. So, And now this little device here makes this thing super easy to turn and basically tune, just move it a little bit at a time. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is most of these cameras now, they used to be all black and white. Now they're pretty much all color and when the light gets actually low it'll actually switch over to black and white so it can actually pull more information in because it doesn't have to work so hard to gather all that light information most of the time you don't need color anyways it's just kind of a luxury uh, because you're just staring at like the outline and species of the fish um, you don't need to see that it's a uh, you know rainbow trout compared to a steelhead it's not going to really matter um, and then you can turn on the infrared lights when it gets super dark like it is now so my lights are on so apparently went right from 30 to 50 feet. Um, so we're gonna send it down to 50 feet. This cable is only 60 feet long, so I'm not gonna go any deeper than this. So right now it's on record. It is absolutely, the sun just went away too, of course, which is not helping my video, but it is pitch black down there, 50 feet of water. Even if it was sunny out, it might be a little bit better, but there's no photosynthesis. There's no weeds down there at 50 feet. Um, and let me show you guys, that's actually 50 feet right there. So I can feel that right on the bottom uh, and there's no 
no footage right there. It's not just the camera. It's not that. It's just dark down there. So let me stop the recording, turn on the infrared lights, and then hit record. Now, people do fish in 50 feet, 75 feet, 100 foot of water. Um, I don't because it takes forever to get down there. So let me spin the camera around, see what you guys can actually see. And even if I pull this up, all you can see is basically silt. So I'm up, uh, I'm up at like, I don't know, 48 feet. And a fish would have to swim within like eight inches of this thing in order to be able to see it. Now this is the smallest sensor size camera they make. Their HD series has a bigger camera, which can see better, higher resolution and everything. Um, same with the other makers of underwater cameras. They have a couple different series. The, the This is made for basically jumping from hole to hole and looking for panfish. Uh, or looking for fish not to be set up the whole time. All right, guys, that's it for tips and tricks on using underwater cameras. I'm going to leave all the links for all the stuff that I use kind of in the video below and kind of a couple of the tips that I might have forgot as I'm editing this. Uh, but make sure you guys subscribe. I got more underwater ice fishing videos coming out throughout the winter. Uh, right now it's 50 degrees out and the ice is slowly melting away in the very end of January. So hopefully we have a cold snap and then we can get back on the ice um, in the good spots.